This program is made possible by the loyal financial support of the friends and partners of Family Policy Institute. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. I'm speaking to Patrick Kwon, uh, the uh, African coordinator for uh, Unashamedly Ethical. And Patrick, we are at the Recognition Awards in Somerset West. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask you is, how is this doing in other African states? We know that it's uh, spread through South Africa. A number of businesses, organizations have signed on that they commit to clean living and ethical business dealing. But what's happening in the rest of Africa? Errol, it's really been amazing. So far in Africa, we have 36 countries who have at least um, UE signatories in those countries. And the momentum going forward now is we're actually looking to work with in-country partners who can become agents for Unashamedly Ethical and we work with them into all the different sectors of society to really permeate UE into those countries. So there's been a great reception amongst ordinary people because corruption is not only a South African problem, it's all over the world, but in Africa we do, we do have a, you know, a problem with corruption. A a absolutely. I mean, if you look at it, um, about 50 billion worth uh, dollars worth of revenue is lost out of Africa through corruption. I mean, that is 50 billion that should be put into housing, into issues to address systemic poverty that Africa is losing. So, if you look at a lot of the elections that have taken place across Africa, most of the narrative around the campaigns is all now turning towards the eradication of corruption. So corruption is a big, big thing yes, uh, and we've seen it across every single country. Oh. And, and unashamedly ethical is such a simple concept. It's like just asking people to sign this pledge form and, and, and make a commitment and a pledge that we won't get involved in any form of corruption, any kind of bribery. We make that commitment and then we have the ombudsman. So it's, 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 a, it's a concept that can help push back against corruption but can allow ordinary people to get involved. Absolutely, because see, it's, it's, it's about people coming to a place of making a commitment and then being part of a system where they're held accountable yes, to that commitment. Because I think the problem is when you don't have a system of accountability that can permeate right down within the country for any ordinary person to be involved, then you have a nation where there's no accountability. So what we're trying to do here is build up the thinking around accountability right down from the grassroots, but permeating right up to the top. Absolutely, and I'm, you know, we bless you, Patrick. You do great work, uh, and it's great we have a person of your uh, stature uh, helping to get unashamedly ethical art across the continent of Africa. And uh, you did a great job tonight and uh, we hope to see more of you in the near future. Awesome. Thank you so much, Errol. Really appreciate it. It is my great joy to welcome our keynote speaker this evening, Dr. Michael Cassidy. Well, Michael needs hardly any introduction to this audience, and it is our honor to ask this humble man of great influence to address us. Michael is the founder of African Enterprise, and while he has addressed parliaments and government leaders around the world, it was his efforts over the election period at the invitation of Nelson Mandela when he brokered peace during the 1994 elections. And it was part of his efforts that diverted the chaos that our nation could have entered in. While there are many titles that Michael can be called, such as pastor, teacher, writer, speaker, I think that this evening, most of us would say the best title for Michael is friend. Welcome, Michael. Thank you so much, Diane, for that gracious introduction. And it is truly wonderful to be here tonight and a great privilege for my wife, Carol, and me to be together with you for the Scala dinner uh, to encourage and bless and give thanks for the unashamedly ethical movement. Thank you so much, Graham, and your leadership for the invitation. And I echo your words about you, Lauren, 
you had us on our knees for quite a while. <laughs> and we bless God for the great miracle of seeing you back and healthy again. Let's give her another clap. <clears throat> I do always love coming to Cape Town. It's very special for me, particularly because this is where I met and married uh, Carol, my wife, 47 years ago. I had roamed around the world uh, looking for a wife, and then the Lord said, go to Cape Town. <laughs> That's where the most beautiful people are. <laughs> and uh, here, here you all are tonight. And I do want to encourage you and all of the unashamedly ethical movement and staff to move forwards with new vigor uh, in terms of the, of, the, of the commitments we need to bring to our country at this time, particularly in terms of helping it to enter into the Judeo-Christian ethic and to godly behavior. So I, I want my message to encourage you tonight, also while being realistic. I don't know whether in terms of encouragement you can match uh, the letter I got from two little Australian girls. I was going to ministry, minister in Australia, and they'd shown a video of our African enterprise work and had been shown in all the schools. When I got there, I got a sheaf of letters from school children, which was great fun. I always enjoyed this one. Dear Mr. Cassidy from Corin and Carmen, Dear Mr. Cassidy, we have seen your video about the missionaries in Africa, and we are writing this letter to encourage you and the rest of the missionaries to do better. <laughs> it was almost as good as another little 11-year-old boy who wrote to me from Tennessee, and he said, Dear Mr. Cassidy, what is it like in Africa? Thank you for preaching about God. If you need any help, let me know. <laughs> and so, brothers and sisters, we all really, really, really need to do better, I think. And we all really, really need to help one another and seek the Lord's help so that our country can be lifted out of its downward slide, which we see at many levels, and be set on a new path to a truly new day. I've entitled my comments for tonight, Brought Out to Be Brought In, based on Deuteronomy 6, verses 20 to 25. And it says, we were Pharaoh's slaves in Egypt, but the Lord brought us out from there that he might bring us in and give us the land that he swore to our fathers and that we would obey his laws because they are for our good always. Everything that the Lord does is always for our good always. And so we, we see here, he brought us out from there. In that context, it was oppression in Egypt. In our context, it was oppression and discrimination under apartheid. And it was that he might bring us into the land, the promised land of Canaan. And in our context, that's the promised land of the new South Africa. And dear ones, we were brought out in order to be brought in. And coming out of Egypt involves a miracle. And coming out of the previous dispensation that ended in 1994, it also involved a miracle. My great concern at this time is that we not throw away the miracle. And in order to avoid this, movements like unashamedly ethical are absolutely critically important. And we commend Graham and Marcel Fersfeld and others who are giving a lead in this for the wonderful work they are doing, because this is about honesty, integrity, morality, and public and personal life through the power of Christ, and also about the challenge of clean living. Incidentally, I heard a good story from my son-in-law, Gary Kirsten, and he told about a time they were in India uh, playing against uh, India, a cricket match, and Pat, Pat Simcox went into bat. And the ball was bowled to him, and it went straight between the, the middle stump and the leg stump without taking off the bales. <laughs> between middle and leg stump without taking off the bales. 
in the press conference asked him, they, they said, uh, Mr. Simcox, how do you explain that? And he said, clean living. <laughs> <laughs> So if you've got problems with your cricket or rugby or tennis, you know, <laughs> clean living will help. So the verse says there we were brought out. And in 1994, dear ones, I believe we were indeed brought out of a potential bloodbath and a political tragedy of epic proportions. Prayer was a huge factor. As Tennyson once said, more things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Through 93 and 94, the prayer continued 24-7. Prayer was mighty even before that 24-7 time was called. It was amazing. As answers came, in 1986, the Inche Synod said apartheid is a sin. That put the skids under that system. Christians gathered at prophetic conferences like Rustenburg 1990. A positive move began to come from government circles to reach a moral and a spiritual and a political turning point and breakthrough. Mandela was released. The, the liberation movements were unbanned. Mandela comes out, of, the, out, out of, comes out with a miraculous posture of forgiveness and reconciliation. Amidst the horrific violence of 1993 and early 94, the Lord intervened in a miraculous way at the 11th hour to bring us into peaceful elections and a new dispensation. And the world, the world recognized this. And the secular newspapers and other secular institutions, and uh, on editorials and newspapers, endlessly the heading was miracle. And the Tal Daily News said the day God stepped in to save South Africa. The Wall Street Journal had a full page of, uh, entitled God and Politics. In the UK Parliament, they said if miracles uh, uh, happen in politics, this is one. Time magazine said history has thrown up an authentic political miracle. The BBC on April the 20th said the Jesus Peace Rally tipped the scales. The 94 elections were the most, those days of 26, 27, 28 April, were the most peaceful three days in the history of South Africa. So we were, we were brought out. We were brought out by the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. But more than that, we had been brought out to be brought in. And we looked to the new South Africa, where justice would prevail, where non-racialism uh, would be the norm, where the poor and the marginalized would find a place in the sun, where schools and universities would flourish, where race relations would be the envy of the world, where we were ready to live up to Archbishop Desmond Tutu's dream of our being a rainbow nation. Our politics would be freed of corruption uh, that we'd seen in previous regime. Our parliament would be a model to the world. We would all embrace the spirit of Mandela. And beyond that, the spirit of Ubuntu and of Judeo-Christian ethics would guide and control us. Marriage and family life and biblical sexuality would flourish. We would follow the laws of God as per Deuteronomy 6.24, which says we follow these statutes because they are for our good, always. And that's always what the Lord wants. We knew at that time, I believe, that as Proverbs uh, says in verse 14:34, that righteousness exalts a nation. And that the corollary is also true that unrighteousness takes a nation downhill. Righteousness takes it uphill, unrighteousness takes it downhill. And all this seemed a wonderful and magical dream. And we were the darlings of the world. But now, on many fronts, we seem to be staring failure in the face. And we don't really like that. We don't like being able to, not to find the answers to what's happening around us. I heard of a student at the end of the academic year, and he, uh, he, he, couldn't, he was stumped by the last question. And he wrote a note to the examiner. And in his note to the examiner, he put it at the end of his paper, uh, he said, God alone knows the answer to this question. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> the examiner replied when he got his paper back, God gets an A, you get an F, Happy New Year. <laughs> Thank you.
But, but dear ones, I think we've got a good few E's and F's when we think about what's happened to the miracle. But sometimes I worry, I must be honest, that we seem to be trying to turn back uh, to the Egypt, to Egypt again, and throw away the miracle. Having become re-racialized, there are places where we, we are, I mean, de-racialized, I should say. We're now in places where we're becoming re-racialized. Uh, all our, our crime and murder rate, one of the highest in the world, uh, our marital breakdown at one in three, the abuse, sexual abuse of children, they now say, is one in three. Uh, endemic corruption seems to be the order of the day. Alcoholism and rape prevail like almost nowhere else. Our economy and rising prices call us concern. And even today, just we were thankful that the S&P Global uh, ratings uh, didn't put us into junk status, but just one notch above it. So there are concerns there. And uh, we seem to be in confusion as a nation about the nature of marriage as monogamous and heterosexual. Uh, we have some antics in our parliament that give us uh, amusement on the one hand, but concern on the other. Our press and media are feeling the squeeze. Our public protector and Tuli Madansela, maybe the most respected and honorable public servant in the country, has felt the wrong sorts of heat and pressure. We have invalid question marks which have been put over the Minister of Finance. And uh, all of these things, dear ones, give us real cause, you know, for concern. So we fail, we seem to be failing at a lot of places. But I do just want to say, as I, as I start to wrap up, I pray, I, I'm so thankful that God gets an A, that he is always there, that he is, he is A for Almighty, and he can come in and help us. Jeremiah 29, 11, you know the verse, I know the plans I have for you, plans for good and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. That was given in the darkest moments of the history of Judah. And so that, beloved, is why I take hope. I know God loves. South Africa has a special place for it. He is still calling people to pray, and many are. There are movements like Unashamedly Ethical that have been raised up. There are some leaders coming together under the Sackley banner. There are new reconciliation movements that are being led by people like Annika Raba and Moss and Kla. These are rising and are going to be made more visible in Orlando Stadium on June 11th, and I plan to be there, and at the Hector Peters, Peterson Memorial on June the 16th. I find in my ministry around the country most awesome young people, black, white, and brown. Oh, beloved, we have the youth, magnificent youth coming up. I praise God that we've been given a public protector who's a deep Christian. I praise God that we've been given a chief justice who is a deep Christian. So all of this is there. But I do, I do, have, to, I do have to say that we have to try and we have to try harder to mend what has become broken. Funny enough, here in, in Somerset West, I, was behind, I came up behind a truck, and on the back of the truck it said, we mend everything that your husband fixed. And I, I think, beloved, that, that the church has to mend some things which uh, maybe the government fixed. And I, I believe we, having been brought out to be brought in, we need to arrest the slippage in our country, affirm very, very clearly we are not going back to Egypt. We affirm afresh our non-racialism and we resist all racist feelings. We call on the church in new ways for evangelism and witness and to recover its nerve in this. We strengthen and undergird movements like a unashamedly ethical. We affirm biblical sexuality. We affirm marriage as monogamous and heterosexual from the biblical point of view. So I do encourage you with all of my heart, and I encourage myself, that we need to try and do better. We can do better. There's lots that can be done, and we need to encourage this in every possible way. So while we are scoring a good few Fs or Es, our God is still scoring A all the time, and he is ready to help us meet every challenge, cross every barrier, climb every mountain. 
So you ask, am I hopeful? You bet. I'm speaking to Sabello here at the Unashamedly Ethical Recognition Awards in Somerset West. And Sabello is famous for being the top scorer at the Rugby 7 Series. Am I saying that right, Sabello? That is perfect, yes. Uh, the, the, top, the top scorer in the series. Yeah. Just tell us a little bit about your background and yourself. Um, basically, I think I'm, I'm, I'm a little boy that I was raised uh, in, I was in uh, born and bred in, in Balcom. Uh, I was raised by two wonderful parents that has taught me um, some wonderful values that I carry throughout my life now. And I think I left that uh, in my rugby, um, rugby career as well, my, my, my daily living as well. And I think that's why I'm here uh, tonight with the Unashamedly Ethical uh, event. Um, I think it's because I, I carry the, the, the same values and the same sentiments they, they carry as well. Um, but, uh, living clean, living right, and doing the right thing at the right time. Uh, I think altogether that's, that's what you should be, and that's, that's what you, you have the sense to do to yeah. like do this. Thing. And that's what I wanted to ask you. You're a young person, you're a rugby, up-and-coming rugby star, um, and, and you share the values of unashamedly ethical. Now, we, we're all aware of the amount of corruption and the challenges that corruption is to the future of this nation, and especially young people. What is your message to young people in this country about corruption and what they can do about it? Yeah, obviously, we, I think our country is in a bad state, which is not very um, um, nice, I think, for, for the, our generation. Um, I think our people can make a difference by everyone just looking at themselves and everyone just trying to better themselves inside and the, the lives they're living. Um, I think we, if we all make like one small change in our life and try to live by it, then holistically we will get better as a country. It's, it's quite difficult for one person to make a change, but A, if everyone makes a, a little change in their lives, then there is a massive difference. That's right. And we will be doing something um, holistic. So I think but, but you made a decision. You said you, you committed yourself to, to ethics, clean living. You made that decision as a young person. And I think a lot of young people don't make that decision. They don't even think about it. Yeah, as, as, as much as you grow up and uh, your parents pretty much... Uh, spoon feed you all the time, there is a point where you're going to be an adult and you have to do things by own. And that's when you need to make a decision be like, hey, this is the way I want to live and, and have a vision towards your life. And I think I made that decision uh, when I became a young adult and said, hey, this is the way I want to live and I'm going to live my, my life purely. Very good. Are we going to see you in the Springbok rugby squad soon? That's the things that I aspire to. Uh, hopefully, I'm, I'm actually counting now between uh, the next year or two, maybe sooner than I think I will be in this career. Yeah. Well, I hope that you make it into the Spirit Box squad. We need more people like you um, to stand up, to speak out, and to be a godly example. That's what South Africa so needs, much, yeah. and we commend you for that. Thank you so, so much. Yeah. I have seven special awards or nominations that I'd like to pay special tribute to people that have had a huge impact um, in either UE, Global Day of Prayer, and in our country as a whole. We know that Unashamedly Ethical has, stands on three pillars, which is the pledge form, the um, database, uh, the uh, connectivity through the uh, website, and the third is the ombudsman, which basically helps whenever there is a complaint or there is a particular issue that the ombudsman uh, is there in order to uh, judge, to help, and preferably to be a, a bridge builder. Now, both our ombudsmen um, happen to be here this evening, and the first one is Keith Matia. Now, Keith um, has been an acting judge on a number of occasions, and I think if the dispensation and the need for um, were different, he probably would be serving as a judge today, no doubt in my mind. Um, and Keith, this award I'd like to give you to say thank you for helping us from the very early stage of developing the Constitution, of putting it all together, and then throughout this period um, to be there in order to help us when there are particular uh, concerns or complaints. 
So I'm going to ask Keith and his wife to come forward for him to receive um, the certificate and for her just a small uh, gift uh, bowl which um, they've put together. And I just want to read what we've said here. In recognition of your absolute passion and your tireless efforts to bring about justice and equality, we acknowledge your contribution to bringing objectivity as the lead founding ombudsman to UE. Your steadfast passion to see ethical and just rulings being made in the best interest of Africa and its people is truly appreciated. The second ombudsman is Graham Dorrington. Um, Graham is a key founding ombudsman for Unashamedly Ethical and is a very dear friend. Um, with sincere appreciation for your continuous assistance and guidance to all legal matters in the founding and expansion of UE in Africa and the globe, your commitment to this initiative is highly valued. Graham and I happen to serve in a forum together. Uh, we see each other regularly and he's just always there to give wisdom and uh, understanding to some of the challenges. Graham. The next person is not able to be here, so I'm going to ask that uh, our um, person from national government, um, that Steve Swat, and also Errol, if the two of you wouldn't mind receiving it on behalf of this lady. She was mentioned earlier today by uh, Michael, and this is for Tuli Madonzella. As our nation's public protector, she holds the responsible position of curbing excesses of public power while standing for justice against state wrongs. Tuli was part of the team that determined South Africa's future when she assisted with the drafting of the Constitution that saw um, Madiba become our president. Tuli is a courageous woman who does not seek public popularity when faced with difficult decisions. She is sensitive to the needs of ordinary people, striving for truth and never content to settle it for anything but total disclosure. She lives a life of high values and ethics. I believe all of you will agree that this lady is a role model I've heard many people say, if only we had somebody like that as the president of this country, I believe that this lady deserves a huge round of applause. <laughs> the next one is for two very special friends who I met in the very first year of the, before we had the first day of prayer at Newlands, and that is Graham and Diane from Witten of Media Village. Media Village Productions is a production company based in Cape Town and has been part of South Africa media industry for the past 19 years. Its foundational vision, using media to let the whole earth hear his voice. To date, Media Village train, training has been able to train 830 students from 76 nations. The Global Day of Prayer and Unashamedly Ethical videos, one of which we saw tonight, have been done by them tirelessly. Um, they have recorded stories around the world for people like Ed Silvozo and many others. And um, I believe that the two of them have been sent by God at a time when um, this vision came and they have just worked away at this tirelessly, Graham and Diane. The next person um, or couple are dear friends, and they're very sad that they can't be here tonight. They'd already made commitments to be at another gathering in the Free State. Um, Hanli and Hein Rupert Kuchlenberg. Um, Hanli and Hein have been extremely, they, they happen to be neighbors of ours at our holiday home in Neisner. Um, what she has done 
as far as intercession and prayer uh, in this country, in this continent, and elsewhere has been remarkable. So I'm going to do this one in Afrikaans, and I'm going to ask Annika, who's a, a very close buddy of hers, uh, who, who, if she can please come forward and receive this. Han liet tesame met aan man hain, is sterk betrokke in die wijnbedrijf, vooral by die familie wijnplaas, hulle mot wijn, wijnlandgoed, en lepids liep uh, uh, vineyards. Sy het bekendheid gewerf as een mezzo-sopraan, met die uitvoering van lieder, en in die veld van oratorium. Met een passievolle toewijding tot die vervulling van die Heerese wil, het Hanli ook die Hanli roep het getuienis trust geskep. Die trust focus op die ondersteuning van christelijke bedieningen, as ook opvoeding en opleiding, zodat so levens van die Heer kan transformeer en hulle hoop kry. Een jaar gelede is in harmonie, een plek van verandering in gebruik geneem. Hier word, die ruimte weer, hier word daar ruimte geskep om verhoudingen te kweek en te bouw, as ook voorziening mee te brengen. Ik wil voor uh, Johan, wat die CEO van een harmonie is, vraag om net te staan. En als jij ook te samen met Annika voor ons net voor Hanli kan zeggen baie dankie. Voor die amazing ondersteuning voor GDOP, voor Anisha Emily Ethical, die vriendschap en wat jullie bezig is om te doen bij Enma Harmony. For those of you that have not had the privilege of visiting Franz Hook, if you go to the stunning Lamotte Winery just behind, there is a chapel a training um, uh, local uh, venue and accommodation that is really five star and it is being used daily, weekly for bringing communities together. I think it's this weekend or next weekend. There happens to be X number of farmers plus X number of their foremen, people of, uh, that are working the farms that are coming together, reconciliation from that level to people in government, to people in business. This is what this place is being used for. An amazing story, an amazing uh, lady, an amazing couple that are doing great work out there. So by a donkey, Hanley and I. second last one is a man who I see as an amazing, humble mentor, um, and that is Francois van Niekerk. Francois is an accomplished businessman and entrepreneur with an expansive vision demonstrated by the diverse businesses he has founded. Their global footprint and his imaginative focus on using commercial success to redress societal imbalance while promoting the Christian cause. He's not only a successful businessman, but also gives back generously to society. His vision of philanthropy has been recognized as being ahead of that of his peers. He's acknowledged for his prolonged contribution to the benefit of the entire South African and continental Africa society. His philanthropic approach is underpinned by his belief in the equitable distribution of actual business ownership and wealth amongst all stakeholders groups contributing to the success of a business. And this is entrepreneurs, investors, employees, customers, and the society at large. Um, dividends from the Mergon Foundation are used to benefit some 140 large-scale faith-based organizations that collectively finance 700 projects, mainly in South Africa, but also in Southern, Central, and North Africa, as well as other countries. I know that Francois was honored last week by UNISA, where he received an honorary doctorate. This guy is more philanthropic and doing more than probably any other person that I know of in this nation. And his book, which, he's rele which he released um, a few months ago, I'm about halfway through, and just talks about a man that was on the brink of bankruptcy, stood in front of the bank and said, Lord, if you give me the opportunity to come through this one, I will commit X percent of my business. Today, 75% of the wealth of uh, this man and the Atterbury Group, which is one of the biggest uh, shopping center developers in Africa, goes through that. They have a, 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 a company which invests in 
many other companies where the bulk, if not, I think it's 85% of all the profits made get ploughed into their foundation. And I know that there are many, many ministries here and NGOs here that are benefiting from the Margon Foundation. Thanks to the Margon team that are here, uh, Dani and Etienne and all of your guys. And Francois, Ecofios here, he is an amazing role model. He is one of the stolste, deepste mensa. I've enjoyed the few times we've had coffee together where you've just shared some amazing uh, insights and wisdom. Baie dankie, laat jy leer is. Baie dankie wat jy doen in ons land en in die continent. The last one, but certainly not least, is a man who is a spiritual father for me, a mentor, a role model, and that's Michael Cassidy and Carol. Uh, Michael is the founder of African Enterprise. He's been involved in evangelism, teaching, and leadership ministries since 1962. The year he launched AE with a mission into Peter Maritzburg. Since then, he has led numerous missions to cities throughout Africa, as well as under, in other parts of the world. To further the accomplishment of AE's mission, he established teams throughout Africa and support offices around the world. In South Africa, he facilitated behind-the-scene initiatives, which brought together a wide spectrum of political leadership in dialogue. These efforts have been widely acknowledged as important contributors to the miraculous, peaceful South African election in April 94. For those of you that don't know, um, at that time, you know that Inkata was not going to be part of the election. Michael, I won't say single-handedly, but along with a number of people, had behind the scenes dealings with um, uh, his chief or uh, Prince uh, Putlezi and got them around the table. And those of you that will remember or are old enough to remember, um, the stickers were put on at the last minute in order to ensure that they were part of the voting. This man played a key role in that negotiations and the prayer initiatives across our nation. When I talk about Sackler 1, those of you that can remember that, Sackler 2, he is the um, initiator and the coordinator of those things. Um, I, don't, I don't know if he's going to forgive me if I tell you, but when I saw his little note that he sent out to us, a, te a team of friends this week, and he spoke about uh, 1936, uh, his birth year, and I came to realize later this year, Michael has his 80th birthday. Man, this guy is doing as much as he, as he is annually now as what he probably did at the age of 30. This guy amazes me. Carol, thank you. They were talking about behind every successful man, but I had another story. They said behind every successful man, there's a surprised mother-in-law. <laughs> now, I didn't know, I didn't know Michael's mother-in-law, Carol's mom, but I want to say that he has just been an amazing person. I know that he prays for me uh, and the family regularly, and just the notes that I get from him, you are special. Thank you. I believe God's got his hand on this nation, that we will see a turnaround. I think today's decision that we are not being downgraded is a starting point of many positives. And uh, I really want to say to all of you, thank you for your time. Thank you for your love and your caring. I do hope for those of you that are not yet members of, of UE, that in the bag there's the little UE pledge form. Please have a look at it. Um, I believe that God has a special plan and that if only we can turn around the corruption. There's no way we're going to rid the country of systemic poverty until we can rid it of systemic corruption. And I believe it is possible, and each of us has a role to play. Thanks, Diane. Thanks, Patrick. So Graham Power, you the visionary and the founder of Unashamedly Ethical, we've just gone through another Recognition Awards evening, it was a great event. 
from the speeches that was made, from the people that won, the people that were on it for the work they do in the community. Are you excited, encouraged about uh, where unashamedly ethical is going? Absolutely where it's going. Not always too happy where it is at the moment or where it was, but we're getting there. And I was really blown away again tonight by the people that were receiving these awards, many of them I don't know. But just to see what's happening in our communities, out there in the townships, people that are plowing their energy, their hearts, their resources into the upliftment, the improvement of people's conditions. We, we live in an amazing country. Our peoples are amazing peoples. I'm blown away by what I've experienced here again tonight. And you know, what is, you know, Graham, what is important about a night like this is almost every day we read in our newspapers, we see on our news bulletins, um, incidences of corruption. And the more we see that, the more despondent people get. And tonight was an inspirational night for one reason, and that is we were introduced to people doing good things, extraordinary things, ordinary people doing extraordinary things to uplift their society and their community. And so I think this is such a worthwhile event, we, and that's why we here. We want to get that out to television to encourage people. But how do we spread this? How do we get this out across the country, across the continent, and how can people out there help? You know, Errol, when we think about the media, I guess that uh, the tough stories, the bad news, is what makes front uh, yes. page kind of news and uh, it's, it's, it's in our faces every day. And corruption is one of those things. I really am saddened that this is you know, what, the position that our country is in and I believe that each of us can make a difference. And I believe that if each of our viewers make the stand to say, you know what, me and my household, we're going to be, uh, we're going to be uh, uh, ethical about what we do. 2 Chronicles 7.14 to me is like the ingredients of baking a cake. If my people who are called by my name will, number one, humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, ethics, values and clean living, then I believe God gives you and I a promise. Then I'll hear from heaven, forgive their sin and heal their land. And that's what I hold on to. Um, and I believe that we can turn this thing around and that we can see uh, positive things happening in this nation. Mm -hmm. The rainbow nation, the rainbow hasn't disappeared and I believe that the colors will shine bright again. You and I must have hope. We've got to continue. And what you're doing in order to bring the good news stories is a huge uh, positive towards achieving that. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. And, and, and what Di Diane said tonight is so true that what is right with this nation is sitting in this room. Two, over 220 people here tonight doing incredible things for God, for their nation, for their communities. They all here. And there's much more people out there, people doing great things that unsung heroes that we don't hear about, but are plodding ahead. But this unashamedly ethical movement helps to encourage people by recognizing them, by encouraging them, telling them, keep on doing what you're doing, because there is a silver lining. There's always hope, as you say. South Africa is a great nation, and we need more of the good people to come to the fore. We don't want to hear any more of the, well, we, we can, we're going to hear of the bad news, but we want the good news to come to the fore a lot more often. Amen. And I really would encourage our viewers out there, go online, have a look at the website, www.unashamedlyethical.com, and become part of this movement. This is not man's plan, this is God's plan, and I believe we're going to see this roll out across South Africa, Africa, and around the world. Yeah, I make ordinary people like, like people out there and people sitting here get behind this, uh, put some passion and effort into it, we can roll it out. And we, can't, we can encourage people, ordinary people, to make a stand and say, I want to be part of this movement. We're pushing against the tide of corruption in South Africa. We can sit at home and complain, but then we can also do something. And I think this is a practical way of fighting corruption in this nation. And so, Graham, I want to thank you and commend you for your passion, your commitment. It was said here tonight for being the visionary and the driving force behind it. We thank God for people like you because we need people like you in South Africa. All honor to God. Thank you, Errol. You guys are doing great work, and I appreciate you, my friend. Bless you.
Today we're taking Anna Shemet the ethical out of the office to the street just to hear what ordinary citizens of South Africa think about the state of corruption in our nation. Corruption is like a big topic right now in South Africa and I think it's affecting our community. As a young person I feel like um, it is hindering my opportunity to have a bright future. That corruption is becoming a culture. South Africa has a big problem with corruption. It's not only in the South Africa. I'm from Nigeria, it's there. The um, corruption is not the all like I study seven on easy. I need qualification, but about was in a true savings, they are a qualification in the right. Brown, I'm going to go from savings and mass, and you don't fag and them savings in. Do far I land, if family am, I'm not a woman that is family, I'm running their mass. Service delivery is failing because money gets lost before it gets to the people. Woman can have a lot of correction. You go there to renew your document, you don't have money, you are in trouble. Africa has been rooted itself with corruption. Our leaders in Africa are corrupt people. corruption. Our nation is in need of ethical leaders. When I hear the word ethical, it means something that you cannot be told to do, something that lives within yourself. You can't have a person or a leader that is unethical. Therefore, the results are going to be unethical. I think we are seeing less people who are standing up and to be accountable in our society. It's really hard to actually point out a leader that says he's ethical, he's someone I can look up to. That can change with young people if they are willing to make change. You need to stand up and say that you want change and then also you become the change that you want to see. I believe that this is a time for us to really stand up and to take the position of role models in communities. If we want to make a change, we must get into business and do it clean, yes, without corruption. It's up to all of us to do the right thing right now. Corruption can be eliminated and there will be hope for South Africa. Fighting for our country to be better, not only for us but for our future. We have a bright future. So Africa is a future. There's hope, that's why I'm still here. So I'm looking forward to be part of the change of South Africa. We need to stand together, all of us from all walks of life, not only blacks, not only whites, we need to be united. What's bad about South Africa can still be fixed about it. What's good about South Africa? And what's good about South Africa is ordinary people like me and you. We are sick and tired of your ways of doing things. This is the way to go now. If we can say enough is enough, you can say no more. So I'm standing with Marius Fori, the CEO of Unashamedly Ethical, and we're here at the awards, the recognition awards in Somerset West. Marius, you're in the job for just three months now. What is your vision for Unashamedly Ethical? We, we stick to the original vision. It's a vision that Graham got from God, and that is to promote ethics, values, and clean living. That's our vision. And we'll be true to that because it comes from God. We, we've decided that we can increase the intensity of the campaign. Um, we can do it better. We can work smarter. We can involve more people. We can reach out to more people. We can acknowledge more people. So there are many things that we can do to pick up on this campaign. Mm. Um, but are, you, are you pleased already with the rollout of the campaign? There's so many businesses. There's so many people signing up to this thing, but what you're saying, you're pleased with that, but you want to increase the intensity, you want more people to, to sign up on this? Yes, if you if you just look at social media and you look at Facebook, and, and you would see that somebody will make a stupid remark or a joke, and they get a million hits, but but we struggle to get 100,000 people to promote ethics, Yeah. and then you know there's something skew in society. And how can we address it and get more people involved and more people to make a stand? We need more people in the trenches. We need more people to take action, especially businesses, especially government. And that will be our key focus areas in the next two to three years. 
Yeah, but look, we commend you, Marius. We commend Unashamedly Ethical for the successes you already had. You know, I was there when the Western Cape government, entire Western Cape government, signed the pledge to Unashamedly Ethical. And so you guys are making great inroads. Of course, you want to increase that. But we thank God for you. And we want to encourage you as the latest CEO that Unashamedly Ethical is a, is a necessary and critical uh, ministry in, in our country at the moment because of all the challenges we're having with corruption. So we want to encourage you and Godspeed and may you grow and extend this thing, not only in South Africa, but all over Africa and the world. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. Thank you very much. My radar on a hot place was on. Your love was a hot place, and there I'm selected. I can't believe it. Gevoelens hoe genaam 